gift of wisdom. And Father, we pray that you grant us wisdom to understand each and everything that they're going to teach to us. Amen. Yeah, thank you, Mary. I think I'm going to... Innocent, innocent. Don't unmute, okay. Now, today, uh, our focus is going to be on paper two, but like I've told you, uh, in the WhatsApp group, we are going to be focusing on the electrostat. Uh, many of the messages I received, people wanted us to look at electrostat, more so on the calculations. Last time, I shared a paper on your group to try out, and according to the feedback I received, people were asking if we can look at those calculations. So today, our focus is going to be in electrostatics, and we are going to be mainly focusing on the calculations. So, however, before we dig into calculations, I know some of you might have started with other uh, sections in, mechan in, the, uh, in this paper. But you know though that when it comes to paper two, under the last section, you have electrostatics, you have electricity, and also you have the capacitors. So some of you, it depends on the school where you are. Some schools start with electricity, and then after electricity, they can go to electrostatics, poker, and then they go to capacitors. However, we have schools that are handling the two simultaneously. So it depends on where you have started. So in case you are still on electricity, that is very fine. In case you started with electrostatics, that is also very fine. At the end of the day, all of us will achieve the same goals. But now today, our focus is going to be on the electrostatics and the, we are going to manage, look at the calculations. So when I'm starting the calculations, one of the things we need to know is what we call the Coulomb's law of electrostatics. We know that whenever we have two charges, remember, uh, those four, I'm going to be a bit, uh, um, because I want to have everyone on board. Now in electrostatics, we are going to talk about the charges and we have basically two charges. We have what we call a positive charge, and we have what we call a negative charge. Whenever you have a positive and a negative charge placed close together, these charges experience a force. That kind of force they do experience, either it can be an attractive force or it can be a repulsion force. So it depends which kind of charges. The same thing happens in real life. In case you have a girl, uh, let me say this is a girl and this is a boy. When these two people are placed close together, they experience a force. There's some kind of feeling that they develop. But when you place a boy and a boy, still there's some kind of feeling they develop. But the feeling when a boy is close to a girl and when a girl is close to a girl, that one is a, another feeling. So it means that the same thing is going to happen when it comes to the, these charges. Whenever I have a positive charge, and if this one is placed to a negative charge, a positive charge, you can take it to be like a boy. A negative charge, you can take it to be a girl. Here, we shall always experience a force. The kind of force is what you call an attraction force. That this one being a positive, it will be attracted towards the negative. So when you have a positive and a negative, this one will result into what you call an attractive force. However, when I bring charges that are the same, let me say I bring a positive charge, I bring a positive charge, I bring a boy, and I bring a ball. You know well that whenever you have two balls, it is very easy for them to fight. So everyone wants to be the powerful. So whenever you bring charges that are the same, it means that these people are going to fight. Everyone will be going in another direction. So when I have a positive and a positive, these ones will result in what you call a repulsion force. The same thing happens when you have a girl or a girl, a negative charge and a negative charge. These two people, it is very hard for them to cooperate at times. So you find them pull, pulling themselves away. So that kind of force is what you call the repulsive force. So whenever you have the same charges, those charges experience what you call a repulsive force. When the charges are, are different, then those two charges are uh, experience what you call an attractive force. So when we are talking about Coulomb zero, we are looking at that force that is existing whenever you have two or more charges. Whenever you have two charges, they experience either an attractive force or what you call a repulsive force. 
But in order for you to get the kind of force existing between the two, then we apply what we call the Coulomb's law. And in order for us to get that kind of force existing, we shall say that the force, which we represent by F, is directly proportional to the product of the magnitude of the charges. It means that if we have two charges, like I've told you a girl and a boy, a girl, I can call him that that charge is Q1, and I have another charge which is Q2. This is like a boy. So we always get the product of those two charges, and it is inversely proportional to the square of the distance of separation. So I divide by the square. So the distance of separation, like I have this is my charge one, and this is my charge two. And these two charges are separated by a distance, maybe R. Now, in order for me to get the force between the two charges, I always multiply these two charges, and then I get the inverse of the distance between them when it is squared. So the distance is R, so I'll say R squared. Now, this is what you call the force between the two charges. So uh, like even in real life is that you can be close to someone. Let me say when uh, a boy is close to her mom, a boy and a mom, the kind of force is a very strong force. Those two people, in, if nothing happens, those two people are always very close. The kind of love they have is too much. The same thing happens when a girl is close to the dad. At times when you find this kind of relation, you find that the force is very, very attractive. They are too close. So the force is strong. But when you find a boy and a dad, here you'll find that the force between the two, it may be there, but not so strong. So that is the same thing that happens in real life and also here when it will come to the charges. So what do I want you to pick? Is that in order for you to find out the kind, how much, like I, let me talk about it in terms of love, how much maybe a boy loves the mom. In order for you to find that, here in charges is what we call the force. In order for us to move this proportional constant, I'll say force is equal to k magnitude of the charges q1, q2, divided by r squared. And this formula here is very important whenever we are calculating the charges, whenever we are calculating the force existing between the charges. Where, now what do you need to know? Where k is what you call our constant of proportionality. You remember very well from your proportions and ratios. So this one we call the constant of proportionality. However, from all the calculations that have been done scientifically and investigated, it has been found out that this k is always equivalent to one out of four pi epsilon naught. Whereby if at all these charges are in air, we shall have epsilon naught. But in case they are not in air, they can be in any other, any other medium. But here, we shall consider them when they are in air. So always we shall have one out of four pi epsilon naught. However, what is the value of one out of four pi epsilon naught? Now, one thing you need to know that epsilon naught is a constant, and this one is given by 8.85 times 10 power negative 12 fermi per meter. And therefore, in order for me to find what my k is, I'll have one out of four pi epsilon naught. But since I know pi is 22 out of seven, I'll say one out of four times my 22 out of seven times my epsilon naught, which is 8.85 times 10 power negative 12. So when you place on your calculators, you place for me and you tell me which value do you come up with? Those who have calculators, can you try to place? and you tell us which values are we coming up with. So when you place that value, uh, when you place that value, uh, dot, when you try on your calculator, you'll end up with something like 8.85 times 10 power nine. Yes, you can place and you test and see what you come up with. Uh, but according to, yes, those who are going to place, you will say that you have 8.988, something like that. Uh, yes, Kevin. Kevin, unmute. Yes, Kevin. Oh. Yes. Kevin, I'm not getting you. Okay. Those who have placed, you will get something like this. Now, after obtaining this value, 
we can round off to only zero decimal place and we shall write it as nine times 10 power nine. And therefore I want to tell you, this is now going to be farad per farad meter. Now this value of K is, we are going to be using it as a standard value. So whenever you are dealing with these calculations, where you have K, we shall always replace it with nine exponent nine per farad a per farad meter. Members, let me know whether we have understood up that point. Has everyone understood? You can Members, have we understood? Yes. Okay. 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 We are going to continue. Have you finished right? Can I proceed? No, we are no. Okay. Let us pass right. Okay. Let's write. In case your background is bad, please try always to mute. Eh? Have your microphone muted. Have your microphone muted. Mr. Mr. Have your microphone muted. I don't want to mute you. So pass right. And one bit I want you to discover at a level, learn to self-teach yourself. Learn to self-teach yourself. Don't wait for teachers to teach everything and always learn to be in front of others. That will help you a lot to be a very good student. So at a level, everyone is wise. Yes. About the SI unit mm. down here, mm. the value of K. Mm. Uh, why is it different from the one of? I, I don't need it. It's F. Oh, now okay. Unit. Okay, here it is farad per meter. Mm. And then since I did one out of. Yes. Oh, so when okay. I do one out of Faraday per meter, what happens mathematically? I can write this as Farad per meter, then per negative one. So when I enter the negative one, I'll get Farad per me Farad power negative one. M it will be negative one times negative one, which will give you F per negative one, M negative one times negative one. So that's why for it has changed because you have said one out of. Okay. 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 I think uh, we can. Can we continue? Yes, sir, we can continue. Okay, I'm going to remove these screen members as we proceed. Now, uh, what, what do I want you to know first? One, I want you to know the forces. The forces are going to be very paramount when we are making calculations. And if you don't understand the forces, it is going to be hard for you to know the direction. Uh, when we talk about this kind of force, we know that force is uh, a vector quantity, meaning you need to know how to obtain uh, its the direction and you need to know how to obtain the magnitude. So when we are having forces, we need to remember the electrostatic forces. So we know that under electrostatic, we know that like charges always do repair. Like charges, we can talk about a positive and we have what we call a positive. So we know very well that when I have a positive and a positive, these like charges are going to repair. So this one will be pulling this side 
and this one will be pulling this side. In case these charges are negative, a negative and a negative, then still this one will be pulling this side, this one will be pulling the other side. Then we know that opposite charges, opposite charges always attract each other. Always attract each other. Now, that means that when I have a positive and I have a negative, the kind of force existing here is an attractive force. So I have a positive there, I have a positive there. So they are going to attract each other. So this is an attractive force and this is a repulsive force. Now, when we are making calculations to obtain the force, we must know which kind of force is existing between the charges. Is it a repulsive force or is it a... Uh, is it a repulsive or it is an attractive force? So the moment you identify that, it means you are at a, you are a step on getting to know how to calculate. So I want you to pay attention to it as we dive into these calculations. So I'm going to first ask you to write and then we work out. So we are going to only now deal with calculations. And after today's lesson, I will ask you to go to the question bank, those who are question bank of physics. You look for physics, you will not miss, you will see every year, every year, for you keep checking, you will see at least it cannot miss two consecutive years. Yes, you will see those calculations appearing everywhere, everywhere. And those numbers usually take six marks, five marks. Yes, they take some good marks. And if you master them here, Remember, you are going to be needing them when you are calculating uh, electric field intensity. You need them. You have to borrow the same idea when it comes to uh, capacitors. You borrow the same idea somewhere. So you'll find that yourself that you almost need them in many of these, uh, of these sessions. Okay. Now, what happens? They are telling us that find the force between the two point charges, five microcoram and negative two microcoram. So now one thing you need to know is that whenever they talk about a micro, this one we call it a micro. Micro means something very small. Whenever we have those smaller units, whenever because a charge is something very small. So we represent, we mainly use micro. So micro means one times 10 power negative six. At times they use nano. When you find n, small n, this one means one, times 10 power negative nine. At times they use pinko, pinko is P. It means one times 10 power negative 12. So when you find five micro coulomb, it means five times 10 power negative 60 coulomb. When you find two nano coulomb, this one means two times 10 power negative nine coulomb. So when you find maybe three pinko coulomb, this one means three times 10 power negative 12. So they can use any of these ones when they're representing. At times even they can use the micro. So you need to know uh, that these are the units that I'm supposed to use. So when you find those ones, those are expression for the charges. So they can use nano, pink, or, uh, or micro. So do not let them not confuse you and you should always know what they do mean. Now here we have two point charges. I have this is my charge, but this charge is a plus five microcoulomb. And I have another charge here, which is a negative two microcoulomb. They are telling us that these charges are placed at a distance which is 10 centimeters apart. Now the first thing always I want you always to identify is which kind of force is existing between the charges that kind of force will be in position to give you the direction. Now, I have a positive. We know that when I have a positive, and this one is a negative, members, which kind of force exists between positive and negative? Attraction. Attraction, very good. Ah, that is an attraction force. So I'm going to draw my arrows. One of the arrows is going to point this side. Another one is going to be pointing this side. This arrow pointing this side, it is showing me that this positive five is going to be attracted to the negative, negative to a negative two. So they are going to have an attractive force between the two. That one is very important. Okay, now afterwards we go back. 
we know that we have said that force is always given by k, the magnitude of charge one, charge two, out of the distance between the two. The reason as why I bring in the magnitude, a magnitude absorbs all the negatives that we have. So when we are calculating a force, always we shall have to get a positive answer because we have that magnitude. So that magnitude absorbs all of those different forces uh, that are, are existing between. So now I'll come, I say force is equal to K. I've told you that K, we shall always consider it as 10, nine times 10 power nine per farad meter. So where there is K, I put that. So I'll have nine times 10 power nine times my magnitude of Q1, which is five. So we say that when they give you five microcoram, micro means one exponent negative six. So this would be five times 10 power negative six coram. So here I will say five times 10 power negative six times say I have negative two micro coram, which is the same as negative two times 10 power negative six coram. Here I will multiply times negative two times 10 power negative six, divide by the distance between the two charges. So our distance here is 10 centimeters, but we can always, you must convert your items into standard units. So the standard units are what? A meters for distance. So what do I do? I'm going to come and I remove the centimeters. So I know that in one meter, I'll have about 100 uh, uh, centimeters. So what do I do? That means I'm going to get my 10. I divide it by 100. So when I divide, I'll end up with 0 0.1. So that means that 10 centimeters are equivalent to 0 0.1 meter. Members, I was together up to that point. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, Trisha, you have a question. Trisha, unmute. Good afternoon. Yes, good afternoon. Sir, I thought the number six, you don't put it in a uh, question. You just put it out. Oh, okay. Just because I still have the magnitude, that's why I'm still carrying it, yeah? So, Trisha, you are right. But I'm saying because now I still have this magnitude, this magnitude are the ones that absorb it. Okay. So, I wanted to show people the use of the magnitudes. Okay. So, divide by 0 0.1 squared. But that is very good, Trisha. Now, since we still have the magnitude, this magnitude absorb any negative you may be having on charges. So, for you, you can drop your negative whenever you're making calculations but knowing that I'm being absorbed away by that. So now once I drop the magnitude, I have nine times nine times five times 10 power negative six times two times 10 power negative six out of 0 0.1, everything squared. Now here, please place your calculators. Don't trust your head. Place your calculators. And I want you now, when you are placing these things on the calculator, let me say nine times 10 power nine. Go on your calculator, place nine. Those people who have been good calculators, down there, down there, there is, a, there is an icon like this, deserving X, 10 X. You have that icon. So that icon is the one for exponent. So for you, place that icon, you place in what you want. So you say nine, you place that, that button, and then you place in now. That one is to power nine, I will place nine. Then time was, you can place everything at the same time. Five exponent negative six. Time was two exponent negative six. So you can place everything at the same time. So those four are placed, I think you may be getting 0 0.09 out of now 0 0.1 squared, which will give you 0 0.01. So this one will result into 0 0.09 divided by 0 0.01, which will give us nine, but force is measured in neutrons. Mister, yes, please. Mister, question? Or oh, Trisha? Oh, Mister, I come again. No. Mister, unmute. Okay, I'm failing to get it. 
Uh, now, what we have obtained is the magnitude. Now, because being a force, we need also to know the direction. So how do we get the direction? Now, when we are getting the direction, we look at the two forces that we have and ask ourselves, for you, first draw, you, 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 you look at the two forces you have. I have a five and I have a negative two. Which one can easily be pulled? It means that now, which one is stronger? When you look at the five and you look at the negative two, which one do you think will be able to move the other? So when you look at those ones very well, you can notice that the one, this one, the negative two, is going to be pulled towards the positive five. So here I will say nine newtons. Nine newtons is my magnitude. And I will say towards the positive five microcoram charge. Reason being is that now this the, the biggest force is, uh, is towards the what? The positive, the positive five. So that's why we are looking at it that the force will be pointing towards the positive. Are we together, members? Tisha. Yes. I have to explain that again, the, uh, the direction of the force. Okay. Now, the direction of the force, okay, I'm going to, we are going to do another number about the direction. But now, for these two, you look at which one, when you look at the positive and you look at the negative, when you look at uh, the positive, let me show you the direction here again. Uh, when you look at, this is like the positive and this is like the negative. You know that the positive, they give away, not so? And then the negative charges for them, they do receive. So what will happen that this one being a bigger force, the positive is bigger than the negative. It means that the positive is like more stronger one. than the negative. Hope you have got it. Yeah, yes, teacher. Okay. So members, can we move on? Okay. Yes, Peter. I'm sorry, I came in late, but I need some little briefing about what we are looking at. Which topic have you covered? Which topic did you start with in electrost in electricity, electrostatics, and capacitors? That section. Uh, we started with electrostatics and we've yeah. not handled electricity. Uh, so we are covering Coulomb's law. Did you cover it? No. Yes, so that's what we are covering. Yes, but we have just started. This is the, our first number. But what is important is for you to know the formula for finding the force between two charges. So that is the formula that the product of the charges and the inverse of the square of the distance between the two. Trisha, you have a question. Excuse me, sir. I thought that the question you only you only write where it's towards like as if the question is like find up the, the charge on for example negative two. Mm. And don't you just your your answer is like nine n attractive. Okay. Now here here, since they have not specified we have two, you can even say it is an attractive force. Yes, but since I'm looking at the direction, here we are looking at the direction. So when you mention attractive, you are mentioning the type of the force that is existing between the two charges. Yes, but the direction means where do you think one is going to go? Okay. Which direction do you think the strongest force will be pulling? 
or resisting. So direction means like when you are looking at the direct, we are looking at, is it going to the east? Is it going to the west? Is it going to the north? Or is it going to the south? So which direction is it going to take? That's what we mean by the direction. But the moment you say attractive, you say it is impulsive. There you are specifying the kind of force between the two charges. But you have not stated which direction are they going to. Is that attractive force stronger on the right or stronger on the left? Is it going, is it very strong like that? So that is now the meaning. But that one, is, we are going to bring that idea more when we have reached the theory, whereby the, when they have specified the where they want us to obtain the kind of force. And someone was asking, can't we find a force existing on one charge? Not really. So when we are looking at columns, we always look at two charges that in order for you to know which force you want, either the force existing, whether attractive or positive, in order for you to know it, you need to have two. It's like you, ne you will never know how strong you are until when you have involved yourself in a fight. You cannot tell me, you cannot convince people that I'm strong, I'm strong, I'm strong, yet they have never seen you fight. So it is until when you are going to the ring, you fight, you beat someone, that's when people will know that you are a stronger person. Yes, but if you have not, you cannot say that I'm strong. So when you are gauging and you want to find a force, that means you must have two or more in order for us to find that kind of force between the two. Yes, Jonathan. Jonathan? Okay, I think. Yes, the column slope members, it says that the force between two point charges is directly proportional to the product of the magnitude of the charges and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between the two charges. Okay. We are doing another one. So we can pass right. Jonathan, you can unmute. Yeah, so we are right soon. So this is the one now we are going to do. Yes. Okay, very good, Isaac. Let me hope Marion has, hoped, has understood. Yes, that negative disappear because of the magnitude. Like we have said that uh, the force between the two charges, you always obtain their magnitude. And whenever you have a negative, the negative is absorbed by the magnitude. Okay. Now here I'll ask you for, you need to pay attention and understand. I don't want you to cram. 
So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to first summarize our question. They're telling us that this force here, this charge here has 64 microgram. Q2 uh, has, for Q3 has uh, 48 microgram, and this one has negative 16 microgram. What are they interested in? They want, they are asking us that, what is the resultant force? Resultant means like, what is the total force? Now, how do we obtain that? One, I want you always to first find out the force existing between the two. The first one, I have Q3 and Q2. Q3 is a positive one. Q2 is a negative. Members, which force is between this Q3 and Q2? Which kind of force? This is positive and this is negative. So when we have a positive and a negative charge, which kind of force exists, members? Attraction. Attraction, good. Uh -huh. So I'm going to come and I draw my line. Because this attraction, it means that one line is going to come from Q3 and another line from Q2 to show that now that is the attraction. Members, we go to that another one. I am looking at Q1 and Q3. When you look at Q1 and Q3, you are not seeing that this is a positive and this one is also positive. Members, which kind of force exists between the two? Positive and positive. Repulsion. Repulsion. Uh -huh, repulsion. Meaning that you must show, you must show that when I have Q1 and Q2, they, this is a repulsive force. So meaning Q2, the arrow is going to be pointing like this. At Q1, the arrow will be pointing like that. Members, is that fine? Is that okay? Yes, sir. Uh -huh. Now, when I come to Q3, now this is where you must understand. So at Q3, I'm going to put another arrow, another yes. force. I'm going to put another arrow like that, that is pointing towards this side and another one at Q, Q1. So this is the repulsive force showing Q3 and Q1. Now, after doing like that, it means that now I'm going to calculate. So I'm going to first find out what is the force between Q1 and Q2 and Q3. Sorry, this is Q3. Q1 and Q3. This is 48 microcoram and this is 64 microcoram. Those who have just come in, we have said that a micro means one exponent negative six. So here, Q1, the force between the two, I will say force is equal to K magnitude of Q1, Q3 out of the distance between which is R squared. So the distance between the two here is six centimeters. So what am I going to do? I will say F is equal to, we have said K, which is nine exponent nine times Q1 is 64, so I write 64 exponent negative six times Q3, which is 48 exponent negative six, divided by the distance apart. The distance is six centimeters, but we say that always you convert them to meters. And we have said that in one, in one meter, uh, in one meter, you have about 100 centimeters. So in case, how many meters are there in 60 centimeters? So you do your cross multiplying, but you always, you know, you divide by 100. So 6 divided by 100 will yield for us 0 0.06. Uh, so here I'm going to come here and I'll have 0 0.06, everything squared. Now what are we going to do? This is the force on Q3 due to Q1. That's how we can, we read it here. So here you allow me, even you can put here, this is the force on Q3 due to Q1 if you want. So members, can we make the calculation? Place on your calculator and you tell me what you come up with. Here, you need to have the skills of using the calculator. Did you? Yes. Uh, that magnitude sign it mm. also applies for, a pos for positive charges. Yeah, yeah. Okay. The use of the magnitude is to eliminate any negative you may be having. 
But that those are positive charges. They are all positive. Yes, that's why we have not included it. But yeah. that one, I'm stating the law. Hey, I'm just stating the law. Hope you have got it. Yes. So members, I'm waiting to tell me which answer you come up with. Place your calculator. I want to seven know six eight zero. Seven six eight zero. Eight members, zero. do we have that? You have what? Seven. Can we place place your calculator? I may be having another answer. Can we place? Seven six eight zero. Seven eight six zero. Seven six eight zero. Sure. Have you squared it down? Yes. May I have two five six zero newtons? Can you please? Teacher, the problem is coming from respectively. It was two one, two two, two three. Oh, it was? We did Could arrange you... the forces according to the question. Oh, okay, 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 okay. So we didn't arrange them. So Q1 was 64. Okay, I think, can we change? Which one is easier to change? Can we leave the question the way it is? And then we just change, change the question. Yes. yes, so it was Q1. So can we put here Q3? And yes. We put Q2. Just do it like Q2. that. Okay, thank you for the correction. So let us do it like that. It is very okay. So which answer do you have here? Place, place seven, again. Eight seven. Zero. Seven, six, eight, zero. Seven, six, eight. Six, eight, zero. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yes. okay, now those are the Newtons. Good. Uh -huh. Now we go to another one. So we go to the second one. We are going to find between Q3 and Q2. So I will come and I say, this is uh, Q3 and this is Q2. Then I ask myself, this is a positive force and this is a negative. So we have said that the force between the two is unattractive. So it will have an arrow, an arrow like this. So now what will I have? I will say still force is equal to K into now Q3. Uh, uh, okay, let okay, there is no problem as long as we out of R squared. So what shall we have? Our K is going to be nine exponent nine times our charge on three, which we have called 48 exponent negative six times the charge on Q2, which is now 16 exponent negative six. Members, I'm dropping the negative because of the magnitude out of the distance between them, which is four. So it will be 0, 0, 0.04 for everything squared. So members, place your code. Four three two zero. Four three two zero. Okay, good. Four three to zero newtons. Now, what are we going to put? So this is the force on Q3 due to Q2. This is the force on Q3 due to Q2. Now, what do you do? You need always to state the direction where that force is going. Now, when you look at the first one, I'm now stating the direction. When you look at the first one, since I'm interested on Q3, the force is pointing towards the right. Since we are interested in Q3, our force is pointing towards the right. So I will, say, I will say this one is towards the right. Because when you look at the arrow, the arrow on Q3 is pointing towards the right. 
When I come here, the force on Q3 due to Q2, when you look at the arrow, it is unattractive. The arrow of the force on Q3 is also pointing to the right. Also here, I'll say towards the right. Members, is that fine? No. Yes? We are, we are repeating. The force we are interested in is the force on Q3. The force on Q3, you are noticing between Q3 and Q2, it is an attractive force. And if it is something is attractive, it means that Q3 will act towards Q2. So the attractive force will look like this. But since I'm interested in Q3, I will always consider this force here. So this force is pointing to the right. When you look at Q1 and Q3, you are noticing that it is a repulsive force. So one is pulling this side, another one is pulling the other side. But I'm interested at the force on Q3. So the force on Q3 is pulling to the right. So that's why I'm saying here my direction is going to be towards the right and here towards the right. Members, is that fine? Peter Chverius. I wanted to ask why we are interested in only force three. No, because yes, the question people. wanted us to find the resultant force on Q3. Okay. That's why now we are working towards that. that. Uh -huh. Yes, Mary. Sir, I want to ask whether all other forces are constant apart from Q3. Okay, yes, because our interest, the question is asking for us to look at the force on acting on Q3. So the force acting on Q3, the arrow on Q3 is the one is the is like is pointing in another direction. So other forces, you just consider them, other arrows for other forces, you just consider them, you neglect them and you concentrate on Q3. Thank you, sir. Okay, Susan. Sir, is it a mandate to, to write the direction? Yes. Once you don't have the direction, you cannot be able to obtain the resultant. Okay, thank you. Okay. Ah, no, yes, we consider the force on the charge where they are interested in us getting the force. Yes, not always the middle, but for you, look at that charge that they want it to see resultant. Uh -huh. Now, when I come here, you remember in your primary, uh, sorry, in the secondary, you remember you used to have like this. This is like our force on Q32. So you're looking, one of the force is going this side, this one of 7680. Well, so when you are looking at the other one, it's also pointing 4320. So when you are looking at the resultant, since both of them are moving the same direction, members, it means what do you do? Do you add, you subtract? Add. 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 Uh -huh. So we are going to get our resultant force. Our resultant force is equal to the first one due to two charge one and the one. So I'll add 7680 plus 4320. And what do we get as the total? What total force do we get? 12,000. 12,000. So I'll say this is 12,000 newtons, but this is magnitude. I'll get the direction towards the right. Yes. Yes, Tricia. Tricia, unmute. Yes. Trisha? Trisha? Oh, okay. I'm failing to get Trisha. Okay. Yes. yes. So please take note. Uh, go back in your question and change this Q3. Uh, change it. That is the question we have worked on. But if you had worked out the way uh, like this as Q2, your answer would be totally different. Uh, your answer will be totally different. So that's why it is always, but don't cramp. You need to answer. Yes. Yes, Trisha. 
have not understood why you added. Why we added? Uh -huh. Trisha, did you understand where this first came from? Who was the right? Which part? Here, the first one. When we say that the direction is towards the right. It's the right. Yes? Yes. Uh -huh. Then what about this one? 4320 towards the right. Uh, yes. Uh -huh. Yes. Now, when uh, do you remember something like this from Oliver? Whereby when things are pointing in the same direction, everyone is pulling you in the same direction. That is the direction Trisha you take. So since you are going in the same direction, that means that the first person pulling you and the second person the total force acting on you is, is going to be the sum of the two individual forces. I don't yeah, know. The reason, why, the reason why I asked him, because mm. they told us we should always subtract the resultant force. Oh, no, 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 no. It's not a must, Trisha. It's not a must at all. What, the, what, what determines whether to subtract or to add is the direction. Is the direction. So these forces are pointing in the same direction. So you cannot. Yes, you cannot. Excuse me. Yes. Okay. Hope you have obtained it, Trisha. Always look at the direction. The moment those forces are pointing in the same direction, there is nothing like subtracting. Okay. Hope you have understood. Yes, who else was asking? Okay. Trisha, let me hope it is okay. Yes. So, okay. Okay. I think uh, yes, it's fine. It is fine. Yeah. Okay. We are continuing to another number. Oh, okay. I'm going to clean this screen. Allow me to clean it and I put another question. Yes. But please, I repeat, do not cram. Understand. Yes, understand. That's when you will be able to put in a lot in your head. So I have Q1 here. I have Q2 here. I have Q3. I have 10 centimeters. I have 10 centimeters. So the question is telling us that the point charges Q1, Q2, and Q3 of magnitude of magnitude. Excuse me, sir. Yes. So, so on the previous, I'm sorry to disturb you, but on the previous number, mm. the resultant force we have obtained, the last resultant force only caters for the Q3. Yes, that is the that yes. Okay, let me give you an example. Let me use here as let me say this is the person. Let me say this is Christine. Yes. And Christine, we have another person here. Maybe this is a boy. And we have another person here who is a boy. Now this boy uh maybe is pulling is pulling Trisha, is pulling Christine, and also this boy is pulling so what when we ask we are asking we want the force if this person is pulling and maybe this one is pulling what is the total force acting on this person that's what we are asking what is the total force acting on christine but oh. still you can have a that's what we are asking but even we can ask to find the total force acting on this person or this person so it depends eh, where they have told you but you can mm. have this person here, now like for the previous question, this was a positive and this was a positive, this was a negative. So you may have a situation whereby these two people, one of them is pulling away, is pulling the person, and you have one person pushing the person. So it, th those are the kind of situations we are working on. So for you need to know which person are they interested in. Are they interested in this middle person? Are they interested in the person on the other side? Like that. Thank you. Okay.
So always read what they want. Mm. So we have that. The point charges still do always the first thing. You put those things, but make sure you read. They told us Q1 is five. So I'll put here five. Uh, Q2 is six. I'll put here six. Uh, Q3 is negative. So I'll put here negative 20. Now the next question you are going to ask, which kind of force is existing between those charges? I'll start. When you look at them, this force here is a positive and this one is a positive. And what is the question interested in? They are interested in Q2. So members, oh, have we even labeled them very well? Have we for the order? Yes, the order is okay. Uh -huh. Members, looking at them, this is positive and this is positive. Which kind of force is between two similar charges? Repulsion. Repulsion. So meaning this one will pull this side and this one will pull this side. That is now the repulsion. So in other words, I have Q1, I have Q2, and they are separated by 10 centimeters. So this one is being pulled this side, this one pulls this side. So it is an a repulsive force between the two. But since they are interested in the charge on Q2, on Q2, on the force, it means that this is the force that we shall be considering and it will be taking this direction. Mm -hmm. Hope that is okay. Huh. We continue now. We are going to first find that force. So the force on charge two due to charge one is going to be K magnitude of Q1, Q2 out of R squared. So our K is always nine exponent nine times charge one, which is five exponent negative six times six exponent negative six divided by now you convert to the 10 centimeters to meters. So 10 centimeters to meters, that is 0 0.1. But since this square, we shall square. Members, are we together at that point? Yes, sir. Is that fine? Okay. Huh? Can we can we get the answer? 27. 27. Uh -huh. So I'll set up first is 27 newtons. Now the next thing, state the direction. So however, we are interested in on the force on Q2. So when you look at Q2, what is the direction of that force? Where is it pointing, right, left? To the right. Right, uh -huh. so here I will say towards the right. Now, after that, I go to the next one. I'm going to go to between Q2 and Q3. So I have now Q2 and Q3. Still the distance is 10 centimeters. Now this is positive and this is negative. When I have two different charges, which kind of force exists? A positive and a negative. Which force exists? Attraction. attraction. So this is an attraction. attraction. So you need to show how an attraction force looks like. So that means Q2 is going to pull, Q3 is also going to pull. Is that fine? Yes. I don't know. Is that okay? Okay. Hope members are getting it. Yes. Okay, okay. Can you go on and calculate for me that? So I expect our person two, one due to Q3 is going to be nine exponent nine 
times 6, exponent negative 6, times 20, exponent negative 6. I'm ignoring the negative because it is, it is what? Uh, I'm ignoring the negative because of the magnitude. So that's why you bring in 20. So make your calculations and you tell us what you have. 108. 108 Newton. So in simple terms, now you have, this is your Q2. One of the forces acting on it is pointing this side, which is F21. There, another one on, still acting on it, which is F31 is also pointing that direction. So all of them are pulling in the same direction. So when you look at those two things, what are you going to do? Are you adding, subtracting? Adding. 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 So we have 108 plus 27. And what shall we get? 135. 135 Newtons. And which direction? To the right. To the right. Members, are we understanding? Yes. Yes. Eh? Mm. Okay. Yes. Okay. You are done. Eh? Has everyone finished? Yes, teacher. Okay. Let me. So we are, I want us to first master this and then we shall be good. Uh -huh. Charges Q2 Q2 and Q3 are placed in air. Yes, and I don't want you to cram that always, uh, I told you in case it is not placed in air, it means that our K will change, yeah? but in most cases it is placed in air. In most cases it is placed in air. This is four centimeters and this is two centimeters. So still they want us to find, calculate the force on Q2. Still do the same, make sure you, you can even have to do them in parts. They want on Q2. So the first thing you do, you do Q1 and Q2, check out. This one is positive and this is what? Negative. So which kind of force exists between the two? Attraction. 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 So this one, the arrow will be like this. The one coming from here, it will be like that. So you are going to find a force on charge Q2 due to charge one. So members, can you do for me that quickly? Hoping now everyone knows how to do it. Me, I'm going to be waiting. Afterwards, I want you to come to Q2 and Q3. This is negative, this is negative. Members, which kind of force exists between the two? Repulsive force. Repulsive. So know the direction that this one is going to be pulling this side, this one will be pulling the other side. Uh, so also come here, find the force on two due to Q3. So let it one do, let it one first try. And the moment you understand here, everything is going to be uh, smooth.
when you get the answer, you can alert us. Yes, Josephine, that is true. Yes, vacuum means air, means space. Members, what are you getting for F21? One thirty five. One thirty five. One thirty five. One thirty five newtons. And what is the direction? What is the direction on the force acting on Q2? To the left. To the left. Is everyone seeing here? The force is pointing towards the left. Mm -hmm. Members, what about here? Sixty-seven point five to the left. Sixty-seven point five newtons to the left. Okay, members, are we getting the same? Are we getting the same? So this is our force on charge U two. So one force is pulling this side, which is two three. Another force is also pulling this side, which is 2, 1. So, members, do we add, do we subtract? Um, we add. Um, yeah. We add. Add, good. Now, I love that you have understood that. 6 or 7.5. So, what is our final answer? Two zero two point five Newtons. Newtons. Uh -huh. Now, this is magnitude. And the direction is? To the left. To the left. Very good. So you can say now, in fact, even you can write it in a good. The force on charge Q2 is 202.5 newtons to the left. Members, are we together? Yes. Yes. Eh? Anyone that is lost? No. Uh, can I remove? I go to another screen. Yes. Okay. Uh, now, this is another one. This is the last one in the same category. Mommy. Mommy. Yes, mommy. Yes, Yes. Now I want you to first find for me between A and B. 
then also find between B and C since they're interested. Yes, but I think I'll give you also another number whereby they can tell to find a force acting on A. So meaning you use B and then also use C. Guess it's like that. So I want you to first try now on your own now. So which force, which type of force is between A and B? Attraction. Attraction. So you need to show that attraction, that A and B are going to be attracted like that. Good. Force on B due to A. Then between B and C, which force are you getting? 10.8. Oh, yeah. Oh, the calculation, eh? Or the, which one? B, A or B, C? B, A. B is what? 10.8. 10.8. Uh -huh. Which direction? To the left. To the left. Okay. Make your calculations. Uh, yeah, calculating. So I have 100.8 newtons to the right. 108.8 newtons to the right. Eh? Right. Yes. Okay, good. So remember, so when you look, still this is an attractive force. This one will pull this side. This will pull that side. But since we are interested that the force at B, it is the right. So you have a diagram of this nature. You have force B. You have one force. This is the 108.8 newtons pulling this side. You have another force this side, which is 10.8 newtons. So one is pulling right, another I'm pulling left. Members, what are we going to do? Are we subtracting? Are we adding? You're going to subtract. Subtract, yeah. So we shall get the 100.8 minus 10.8. So we end up with? 90 newtons to the right. 90 newtons to the right. Why do you say to the right? Because it's, it is the greatest force. 
Ah, oh, the good. bigger one. Ah, ah, good. Yes, good. That is the right. So that is to the right. A strong person always will take the biggest share. Members, are we understanding? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay, good. I continue. Yes. Okay. I want now to give you one that uh uh one, the last one. The last one. I had said that one was the last one, but let me give you the last one. Yeah. For our own understanding, because I want you to understand fully. Because once you understand this one, the other shapes are going to be very easy. So you have seen many times you have been calculating for the middle, middle, middle. What if they don't want the force in the middle? This is four. Just making it better. So this is centimeter and this is 10 centimeter okay so we are finding find force on fifth degree now that's where we have we have to apply our understanding the force on q3 it is acted on by q2 and also q1 so i can first start I can start with Q2 and Q3. The distance between the two is 10 centimeters. Uh -huh. Q2 is negative 34.7 microcora. This one is 23.4 microcora. Members, which kind of force exists between the two? Attraction. Attraction. Put it there, show that they are attracting themselves. This one will put this side. This one we put this side. So members, can we calculate the force? Let everyone calculate the force. Calculate the force. Me, I'm just putting this as you make your calculation. Always never forget to convert the centimeters to meters. So calculate your force. Sir. Yes. I think you've, you've made a mistake. I think it has to be 30, 30 centimeters, so it be 0 0.3, because it's... Oh. oh no, yes. it's Q2. You've begun with Q2. It's right. Yeah, okay. Okay, Mary. Mm -hmm. hey, Mary, continue like that. Or you continue like that, it's fine. Okay, sir. Okay. So... Members, have we got some answer there? Yes. So this is one of the reactions we shall have between the two, but also now we are going to have of three between this and this. So I X now we shall have Q1 and Q3, but the distance between members, this is 20 and this is 10. So here we shall have 30 centimeters. So this is 46.3 microcora, and this is 23.4 microcora. Mm. 
Remember, switch answers are we getting for the first one? Seven hundred eighteen point two nine. I beg your pardon. Seven hundred eighteen point two nine. Seven hundred eighteen point two nine. Okay. Remember, is it what we are getting? Seven hundred thirty point eight. What? What? Pardon. Make sure you place your card well. Place your calculators again, members. You can also place mine here. Seven hundred thirty point eight. Ah, uh -huh. seven hundred thirty point seven eight two newtons. Good. Uh -huh. I go now to these ones. This one is positive. This one is positive. Which kind of force exists? Positive and positive. Which kind of force exists? Attraction. Yeah. Repulsive. 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 Eh? Yeah. So this one will pull this side. This one will pull this. Members, don't forget here the direction was what? To the... When we look at... To the left. Up, to the left. Okay. To the so left. Here, to the left. Q3 due to Q1. So here we shall have 9 times 10 power 9 times 46.3 exponent negative 6 times 23.4 exponent negative 6 out of 0 0.3 squared. Please do not forget that the distance is Q1 to Q3. This is 20 plus 10. So let us also calculate and see what we we'll come up with. I have... 108.342 newtons to the right to the right okay, okay. thank you mary uh, mary continue and finish i guess you have reached that point please continue For the resultant, I have 622.44 to the left. Okay, good, good. So members, thank you, Mary. When you look at F3, it had one force that was going to the right, which is 108.342. Then we have another force that is going to the left, which is 730.782. So here to get our net force, it means that our net force on theory, you say 730.782 minus 108.342. And Mary got 622. Yes, sir. 622.44 to the left. Uh -huh. So, uh, Mary, why to the left? Because it's the bigger force. Okay, because it is a bigger force. So it is the powerful person. So the powerful person is pulling the left hand and the weaker one is on the right hand. So this one pulling the left hand will always take you, will take the advantage. Okay, members, are we together in that? Yes. Okay. And now... Yes, now I want us to, I want us now to start the serious number, other serious numbers in other version. Okay, so can I clean the screen? Yes, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'll clean this. So now this one, it's going to be a bit lengthy, but we shall do. It says charges of two micro column. Negative four micro coram, six micro coram, and negative eight micro coram. Uh, 
at the corners are, are assembled at the corners of a square of side three meters as shown as shown below. So uh, we have, this is our square. So this is our square where you have child Q1, you have, uh, this is child Q4, child Q3, and child Q2. Hope members are finished. So our question, so Q3, let me put the cages. This is six microcorum. Uh, this is negative four microcorum. Uh, this is negative eight microcorum. And this is two microcora. Then our question is find the resultant, find the resultant force on the charge, on the charge, uh, on, uh, on charge Q2. Okay, on charge, oh, sorry, on charge. Q2. Are we there? Now, what do we need always to know? One, always whenever you find or you meet such numbers, first go again and trace out your figure. Find out the forces existing between what they want. So I'm going to come, I trace out this. So this is negative four microcorum. This is six microcorum. This is negative eight microcorum. And this is two microcorum. The next thing you ask yourself, when I look at these ones, which kind of force is existing? So you start slowly. Since this is the charge where we are interested in. So I start, this is positive and this is negative. Members, which kind of force is there? Attraction. 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 Now, members, are you not seeing that now, since we are interested in Q1, we shall have like this, and this one will be pulling. So the force on Q1, due to on Q2 due to Q1, which I'm going to call F, on Q2 due to Q1, is going to be pointing to the left. Are you seeing that? Yes. That... Uh -huh. Now, I come to this one, Q3 here down. This is positive and this is negative. Which direction shall we have our force on Q2 pointing? Downward. Downward. Yeah? Downward. 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 Yeah. So this is our force on Q2 due to charge theory. Then I have this one. Now this is one that I want you to understand well. This one, I can first draw a line between the two. Now, this is negative and this is negative. Yes. Which direction do you think our force will be? Which kind of thing shall we have? Attraction, repulsion. Repulsion. So meaning this one will be pulling this side as this one is pulling this side. So our force is going to be in this direction. The force on Q2 due to Q2. Now, this is where, as everyone done dissolving, Yes. Okay. Okay. Now we are good. So I'm going to just come a bit. I draw uh, something like this. So now for me, I want you to first find for me the force on two due to Q1. That is the first thing I want you to get for me. Remember here, this is a square. So it is three meters, three meters. 
So I, we are going to first find F21. So members, I will say this is 9 exponent 9 times 2 exponent negative 6 times 4 exponent negative 6 divided by 3 squared. Get the answer. Then I'm going to say pause on 2 due to Q3. So I say 9 exponent 9 times uh, 6 exponent negative 6 times 4 exponent negative 6 out of 3 squared. Members, are we together at that point? Yes. Ah, okay. Can we go on and first, you first go on and obtain what you have as your what? Uh, I want you to obtain those answers with the answers you get. Real world, you need to wake up. That's false. Mm. Um. I'm getting 0 0.08. 0 0.08 newtons. Okay. And the direction is? To the right. Are you sure? No, to the left. To the left. Eh? When you look at this red one, it's pointing yeah. to the left. Yeah, to the left. To the left. Yeah, okay. Uh -huh. Can we do the second one? Zero point zero two four two four newtons and which direction downwards downwards good now we go to the next one now the yes. next one yes zero can four. we write them in that form zero point zero two four yes in case those want to write them in standard form I think yeah. there are two other forms you can write them. Those who want, you okay. can write it as, now this is downwards, you can write it as 0, negative 0 0.024. That one is okay. Or you can write it as uh, negative 0 0.024 J, if that's what you want. Is that no, right? Teacher, that's not what I meant. Hmm. What do you mean? Like oh, in uh, standard form. Yes. Okay, it is fine. It is fine. Two point four exponent. Yeah, it is okay. Hey, yeah, like that's it. one. Okay, okay. Uh -huh. Then I come here. Now we want to find the distance between Q four and yes. For that, F force on acting on two by three above F. Two, three. It's not mm. what I'm getting. Mm. What are you getting? I'm getting zero point zero three six. I don't know whether I have made a mistake or it's the have mistake. You... Me, I'm getting the same answer. Yes. Yeah. Like, hope you have not uh changed these ones to centimeters down. No, I have not. Okay. What put on the calculator? Nine exponent nine times six yeah. exponent negative six times four exponent negative six. What do you get? Let me first. I'm getting 0 0.216. Uh -huh. Divide by what? Divide by six. Ah. Eh, divide by nine. Oh. Okay. Yeah, you okay. were wrong. Oh yeah, that's it. Thank you, sir. Okay, sorry. And I think that is a common mistake. It yes, is it is. Hmm. Of saying three times. Uh -huh. Okay, now we come back here. Now we want to obtain that distance. But when you look at it, you are not saying it is the right angle to triangle. 
Here you have the ring. Here you have the ring. So in order for us to get this one, we shall use Pythagoras theorem. So can we get this one? Root 18. Root of 18. So here we shall look, write root of 18. So now we go and we get that force. So I'll come and say force F24, which is nine exponent nine times uh, our four exponent negative six times eight exponent negative six divided by root of 18 squared. Now to maintain accuracy, bring your root. Go with your root. Zero point zero one six zero. Point zero one six eh? newtons. Now for this one, we don't know the direction yet. Now, how do we get the direction? Now, I want you to first obtain for me which angle do we have here? Here, I want you to obtain 60. that angle. 60, mm, calculate it. You can say this is opposite and this is adjacent. So that is tan. Let me oh. say it is beta. Hmm. Opposite. So members, hope everyone knows how to use tan. Yes. yes. Okay, let's calculate it. So why have we used root 18? 45. 45. So this yeah. be, will be tan theta is equal to 1, and tan inverse of 1 is equal to 45. Why have we used what? Root of 18. Eh? Because the distance from Q4 to Q2, when you, you we use the, our Pythagoras theorem, like here you had 3, here you had 3. So that is 3 squared plus 3 squared, which gives you nine plus nine, which is 18. And then you get the square root to get this distance here. Is it fine? Yes. Okay. Uh -huh. Now members, this angle here we have obtained is 45. Do not assume or is calculated. So here you have 45 degrees. Now members, I want you to look here. Which angle shall we have here? 45. 45. 45. One. Uh -huh. uh, vertical. Uh, yes, they are vertically opposite. Now I want to, I want I'm coming here to draw this. What about here? Which angle shall we have? 45. 45. 45. 45. Good. Now members, are you seeing our force here? Is 0 0.016. The angle it has here is 45. Now you have told me you now to resolve. So what is going to be our force resolved? Uh, force. The mm. vertical component or the horizontal Okay, component? we can start horizontal component. It will be F force 45. 0 0.016. Cos of 40 what? 5. 45. Members, are you seeing that? Yes. Uh -huh. So, but the direction is this side, so that is okay. So you can, uh, this is your I. Okay, let me see. Okay, let me say. 
let me put here that this is your whole yes okay okay let me i think i need to do it like this eh? now i want you to to be this is 45 eh? and along here is where we have our force f to no, my question hmm. my question is where is the f24 facing upwards the distance oh, that no that is no the distance is from here the distance we are obtaining is from here are you seeing this point here yeah. up to here yes so this distance is the root of 18. Like here you have three, here you have three. So the direct, always we use direct distance from the charge to the another charge. So the direct root here to obtain it, you, this is a, a right angle, the triangle. So three squared plus three squared is 18 and you get a square root. Have you got? No teacher, my question was, Hmm. Doesn't doesn't it have an arrow? Like is the arrow isn't isn't it supposed to face up? Oh, okay. Now uh, that is now what we are finding because now that one is 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 the diagonal, so we must bring it to horizontally and vertically such that we get its right direction. So okay. here you don't say that it is diagonal. So whenever you find that it is at a given angle, the direction you must resolve, and that's what we had started. Are you getting it? Yes. Okay. Have you learned resolving? Yes. Okay. Uh -huh. So members, hope this is okay. So here, allow me to put I in the I direction. Then plus, we resolve in the vertical. So vertically, you resolve towards here. So you end up with 0 0.016 sine of 45. That is along the G. Members, are we on the same track? Yes, sir. Place your calculator. Mary is silent. Mary, are you on the same track? Yes, sir. Okay. So here, are we getting 113 I plus? You place your calculator. Even here, I'm getting 0 0.0113 J. Mm -hmm. Are you getting that? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh -huh. This number, we are still continuing. Now, after doing so, can you obtain all your forces along the X? Along the X, meaning all those forces that are horizontal acting on this point. So one of them is this F21 we had, and we said that for it, it was moving to the left. And now what you need to know is that when something is moving, yes? So when something is moving to the left, this side, we consider this direction to be a negative. So if I'm looking for forces along X, I'm going to write it as negative 0 0.008. Plus, this one is being a positive. I write 0 0.0113. Members, what do we get for our total force along the x direction? Are we getting 0 0.033 positive? Ah, then I get the force along the y. Along the Y, we have this two theory, which is going downwards. So something going downwards, we consider it as negative. So I write it as negative 0 0.024 plus our force along the J, which is along the vertical here. So it is 0 0.0113. So I'll add those two forces. So when I do so, I'm getting my answers negative 0 0.0127, but negative. So these are Newtons, these are Newtons. Yes, Chiberu. Master, I'm requesting you to repeat for me that Wait. Step, those two steps. Which steps? 
I I stopped when we we are resolving. Yeah. Did when you understand we how we resolved? Yes. Ah, okay. Okay. Yes, Mary. Okay, I'm going to repeat that step. So what if I don't first find the angle and then I just use the the sides that since I know that my course will be three over root eighteen, I say I'm getting the same answer. Is it okay or it's a must I have to first find the angle? Oh no, no, it's not a must to find the angle. That one is also okay. Hey, oh, it is also okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh-huh. So Chiberu, what we are saying, what we are saying is that now uh, our Q2, this is going to be our Q2 here. Now our Q2, we have got this force here, which we have obtained at 0 0.0113. But earlier on, we obtained another force, which was 0 0.08. Also, we obtained this one down, which was F23, which was 0 0.024. Still, we have obtained another force going upwards, which is 0 0.0113. So in order for us to find the total, we must get the ones acting horizontally and those acting vertically. Anything down, we call it a negative. Anything to the left is a negative. So the forces acting along the x direction, we shall have this 0 0.013 minus this one acting on the left, which is minus 0 0.008. So once you do so, you'll end up with 0 0.003 newtons. When you look at this one acting vertically, you have that is what you call f of y. So that one, you get this upper one and you add it on the one down. So it is 0 0.0113 minus the one down, which is 0 0.024. So you end up with your answer as negative 0 0.0127 newtons. That is f y. So I don't know they're in the same track. Did you have understood that part, but on your right, this side, eh, where mm. we have 45 degrees, mm. there is a step of missed teacher here. After uh -huh, that side. This green one? Yeah, after that one, after the green step. This uh -huh, one? That one. Yeah. Uh -huh. Now this one, then the, when you the third one, one. This one? The third step, yeah. Uh -huh. Now this is the one I'm explaining here. That when you look at along the X, you have some forces that are pointing to the right. You have some forces that are pointing to the left. So you get the net force of the right and the left. So the net force right, you can take it as a positive. The one on the left is a negative. And we said that when you get two forces pointing in different directions, you subtract. So that's what we have been doing. I don't know that is okay now or not yet. It's okay. Uh, now, when we reach here, we need always now to learn how to draw the diagram. Members, we have not finished this number. Now, how do we draw? In order for us to draw, we have fx is positive. So we know that positive forces are going to look like that. So that is our f along the x. F1 is negative. Negative means it is going to move downwards. It will look like that, F of Y. Now, in order for us to obtain our resultant, our resultant is that line that connects our forces directly. Or in case you don't want to draw it like this, what you do, you say, ah, this is my Fx. Where Fx is start, stop, stop. Stops, that's where Fy starts. So I can draw my Fy like this, that this is Fy. So from the start here to the end point is where is what we call our resultant. So our resultant is going to be like that. Whereby here we have our force, which is 0 0.033, and downwards here we have 0 0.0127. So the resultant is the magnitude of f of x and f of y. So the net force is going to be your f of x squared plus your f of y squared. So can you square and see which answer we get? Yes, Trisha.
Trisha? Excuse me, teacher. I would yes. like you to help me with the, with this step of finding f x and f y because there are very many methods, but each method has a different answer. So ah, that, okay, that, which is, one? that is what confuses me. Which one have you used? You, I want yes, the one. You I, you was, I was using the one we use. We use in physics paper one, the paper for mechanics. Mm. Well, but it gives me different answers and then the uh, other don't. one then the other method we used was like is like on the f for for f21 on y it is 0 0.008 and then on x it is zero then you keep on adding even the mm. angles mm. Uh, but now for left here you have to put a negative of f of two one, did you put a negative? Yes, I put it. Uh huh. Then, which one it is? Did you add? Mm, not sure. I was just inquiring. Hmm. Because every method just has different answers. No, the answer is the same. Which one have you failed to get? Yes. Which one no, have you I'm, failed I'm, to get? I'm, I'm just asking if you can help me and if you don't mind, you can repeat for me this part. Which one? None of finding F, X and F, Y. Oh, from where? From because, here? Because because they are, they, there is a different formula they taught us. Which formula is that? The one of where you first start with, if with on this on this thing, the thing mm. that is going up, and that has an angle, the has an angle forty five. We'd mm. be like for f y f y mm. upwards the f y is zero point zero eight and then downwards since it's on the y line the x is zero. Oh no! But now f two one when you look at f two one, eh? Where is yes. okay? When you look at f two one, this one is along x. So I'll expect to have 0 0.008 and 0, but negative. Because it's along the way. So you write X and Y. Okay. I, I, I get it. Hmm? I get it. Uh-huh. Then the other question was? No, it was, it was only that one. Okay. Uh, now, for this one, you write x is 0 downwards, you write negative 0 0.024. For now, for this particular one of f24, you would have written it as along the x, you have 0 0.0113. Along the y is also 0 0.0113. Then you add those ones. You add this plus this plus this. You also come up with the same. Is it fine, Trisha? Yes. Okay. Yes, Chiveru. Master, I'm having a challenge with F24. Hmm. What After are resolving the components, eh? hmm. teacher, yes, uh, I thought you, you put there, you put there plus sign. Hmm. So I'm yeah. asking, mm. uh, what do those I and J mean? Oh, you have not done. Now, I means forces along the X direction. J means forces along the, J, the Y direction. So it means that when you resolve this force, it is going to be pointing along the X axis in the positive direction. When you resolve it vertically, it is going to be pointing upwards. So J means force along the Y. I means the long, the X. Hope that is fine. Thank you. Okay. Uh -huh. Members, now can we get this angle here? Is our direction. Let's move this is the force you are getting. Now to get this angle, say opposite out of adjacent. So can we find that angle?
which angle are you coming up with? Are you coming up with that angle? I'm getting 75.43. Yes, sir. Is? Okay, yes. Members, are we having that? Okay, please uh, confirm that that's what you have. But people who have not done any resolving, I know it is a bit more challenging. Yeah, but with the time, you'll get there. You'll get there. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I want to give you... Yes, Peter. Teacher, the last question is, why are we finding the angle Angle, angle is the direction. It's like a bearing, is the direction. Remember, this is a force. So a force, you must give the magnitude and then the direction. So the, the angle shows us the direction. And now when we are stating, in fact, our final answer here, I want us to state it in a better way. This angle can be correct, given you have added on another statement. How are you going to state it? You can say that my resultant force is 0 0.01312 newtons uh, at an angle of 75.43 with the 0 0.0033 newtons. That is one way of stating it. Or you are going to say, uh -huh, in fact, or you are going to say, in fact, when you state it 75.3, this one, that it makes sense, but you must add on something to show in which quadrant is it. So when I draw like this, I can say it is 75.43. Then I look out for which quadrant is that angle. So I will say below. Uh, oh, I will say uh, below. Below. They all below the below the positive horizontal below the positive okay. horizontal i don't okay, know that scroll down. yes let's scroll down oh no okay i cannot scroll because i'm using a screen i'm using a powerpoint so i cannot i it is hard for me to scroll okay but yeah uh, Okay. Hope you have got it. So you said 75.43 below the positive horizontal. This is what you call the positive horizontal here. This is positive, negative. So this is positive horizontal. In case that it had been formed here, you'd say above the positive horizontal. But in the first quadrant, it is okay. Another person would as well give that angle uh, like 284.56. A person who measures from here up to here, for you that angle is very okay. If you give it, it as 284.56 degrees and you just leave it, that one's okay. But given you have not measured from the initial angle position clockwise, then make sure, uh, and clockwise, make sure you accompany it, whether it is below the positive horizontal, whether it is above the positive horizontal, whether it is below the negative horizontal, or something like that. Members, hope that is fine. Yes, Are we teacher. together? Yes, teacher. Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Allow me now to clean this screen. I give you two numbers for our homework that we are going to try out in our free time. So in your free time, I want you to go and then uh you try out, you try out, and then you see whether things are coming out. Okay, the first one. Peter. Yes. Peter. That constant is always given on the paper, right? Yes, the nine exponent nine. Eh? Yeah. Hey, it's that one given. Will, yes, that one, they will give it to you. They will give it to okay. you. Yeah. But knowing it, does not uh, affect you. You can know it in the head. Yeah, it's also okay. Mm. It's also okay to know it. 
Yeah, it's very good. So these are the numbers you're going to try out in your free time. Do not forget uh, uh, this PowerPoint, I will not be able to share it. That's the why? Yes. Oh, not like I have uh, this one. I've not saved it. I've not been saving it. Yeah, like I've not saved the screen, but the only thing we can share is the report. Yeah, because I've been writing it. So I've been annotating, so it doesn't automatically save. Where can we get the recording? Yes, we are going to share it in our WhatsApp group after an hour from here, maybe. Yes, Jonathan, that is OK. Anyone who can drop that link, please help. Otherwise, once I go off here, it means uh, this work will disappear. Master, the negative four does not have columns. Oh, it has. It has. I put the columns there. Put the columns. Have you finished, right? Yes. 
Okay. Hope everyone has finished. I want to stop sharing the screen. Yes, so I want to thank all of you for attending. So please practice and then 